Crane. What's going on, folks? John Crane here in my shop, and today we're going head to head evaporust rust remover against backyard ballistics rust remover. Now the evaporust, $130 for five gallons delivered from Amazon. The backyard ballistics rust remover, these ingredients right here, and some water. We're talking $25. Now we're gonna go head to head and compare these two. And our test is gonna be with this right here. This Chisholm Moore chain hoist sent out to me from my buddy, Dan Blyde in the great state of New Jersey, Taylor ham, egg and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup. This is gonna be the test. Look at this old rusty hoist. This is a great hoist. We're gonna put half of this hoist in this bucket, the other half in this bucket, do the test. All right, let's get right to it. All right, now later in the video, we're gonna go over some other formulas that I found online for some other rust removers that seem like they could work pretty good. And also, I found out, I think, what the secret ingredient is in this evaporust. We're gonna talk about that later. Right now, let's mix up the Backyard Ballistics Rust Remover. All right, the formula from Backyard Ballistics is as follows. One liter of water, 100 grams of citric acid, 63 grams of baking soda, and a squirt of dish soap here as a surfactant. Now, I've multiplied this formula to make roughly around five gallons. I got the five gallon bucket here. I have four gallons of water in this bucket. We got some citric acid. I got this off of Amazon. Citric acid, 1,500 grams I have weighed out here in this bowl. The baking soda, I got 945 grams weighed out in this bowl. And then for the dish soap, I just went with two ounces, 57 grams. All right, into our four gallons of water goes our 1,500 grams of citric acid. So we're just gonna dump this right in. This is the same stuff that makes Sour Patch Kids taste sour, those little gummies. You know, all of this is food safe, everything except for the soap. All right, let's give this a mix with the drill. All right, I got some litmus paper here, and we're gonna test the pH just of the citric acid right now, just to get a reading. Let's dunk this in. And this is what I'm expecting, is about a two to three. Looks to me to be around a two. All right, now what we're doing when we're measuring the pH is that we're testing for the amount of hydrogen ions in the solution. So every number that we go lower here, the amount of hydrogen ions decreases by a factor of 10. All right, here we go. This is the fun part of making this. This is like an old school science class experiment that your grade school science teacher might have even shown you, uh, shown you by putting some baking soda into an acid such as citric acid. And what's gonna happen, we're gonna have an endothermic reaction. You're gonna see a uh, bubbling up here of carbon dioxide being released. It's just like soda, right? Like fizzy water or soda, carbon dioxide. That's what those bubbles are. And when we put this in here, we're gonna get an endothermic reaction. It's actually gonna draw some heat in from its surroundings. The bucket, it's gonna get a little bit cold because of that reaction. We can only put a little bit in at a time. You know, we don't want this to foam over the top, right? The same stuff, you know, you use this for baking. This is the stuff that gives a little bit of rise to your biscuits. You gotta have a little bit of uh, acid in those recipes. And same as like uh, baking powder, all that is is some baking soda and it's got a little cream of tartar in there for the acid. You put that in there, as soon as you mix some water into your biscuits, that gives it a little bit of rise. So some uh, carbon dioxide gas comes out, gives everything a little bit of lift. All right, the only thing your science teacher didn't tell you though is after you mix this was to throw in some rusty wrenches, which is uh, what we're doing here today. All right, so we got 
Our citric acid, we got a pH here of about two or three. We got our baking soda, which is a pH of around eight or nine. What we're actually trying to do here is bring this up to around a four or a five, kind of uh, the same acidity as uh, a tomato juice. All right, let's start to put a little bit of this in. All right, see that fizz up there? All right, all that carbon dioxide being released from the chemical reaction. It does feel a little bit of cool on the outside of the bucket right here where the reaction is happening. Uh-oh, uh-oh, getting close. All right, let's see what we got now. All right, and I can see we're right there at a four. So that is really good. That is what we want at a four, like a tomato juice. All right, now let's add our dish soap here. We got our 57 grams, our two ounce, ounces of uh, dish soap, Dawn detergent. All right, now while we're at it with the pH, let's test the evaporus. So we'll stick this in here and let's see what we got here. All right, see, we're coming in at like a five here. Looks pretty clear that that is like a five on the evaporus. So we're not quite neutral. We're pretty close though. All right, here we go, all mixed up. Let's drop in the old Dan Bly hoist here from New Jersey. I'll put this into this side. And let's drop this into the evaporus over here. All right, we got these both in here. This one is sticking up a little bit, so I think I need a little bit more mass in there. So check this out. I'm sticking in this old Acme number two stapler. Isn't that thing cool? All right, there we go, folks. I'm gonna put these lids on and the race is on. All right, here we go. 24 hours later. And let's see what we got. Yeah, more of this foam here on the top. All right, let's look at the evaporest one. This one, it's looking pretty good, I gotta say. Right out of the bucket. Yeah, look at that. I don't, I don't see any rust on that at all. You see that? All right, let's see what we got here on this side. And there is some rust on there. It looks like it's just rubbing right off. It does look pretty good. I gotta say the uh, evaporust looks a little bit better at this point, but this still does look really good. It looks like it's just gonna rub right off. We're gonna bring it outside and hose it off. All right, just to give a close up look right out of the bucket 24 hours later, we got the evaporust on this side. All right, let's look at this side here, the Backyard Ballistics Rust Remover. And you can see there's still a little bit of orange on here, but it looks like it's just gonna wash right off. You know, where this, it's already kind of off on this side. We still got a little bit of residue left over, but let's go wash it off and see what we get. All right, here we are with the post rust remover evaluation. On the left side, we got the backyard ballistics citric acid baking soda combination. On the right here, we got the evaporust. I'll let you be the judge right now. Let me give you a closer look. 
All right, this is the citric acid and the baking soda. All right, and here is the evaporest side. What did you guys think? What do you think? Was it the citric acid one? Was this one better? Or was the evaporest one better? Your eyes are as good as mine. I'm trying to give you a really good view of both of these. All right, my opinion, I think obviously the evaporest did a better job, but you know, you look at this here, right? There's still some little rust spots on here. A lot of that did wash off. I actually think both of these did an amazing job. All right, now obviously both of these worked great. And this one, right, the Backyard Ballistics one, $25, you know, the Evaporest, 130 Is it worth the extra $105? You know, that is a lot of money. And, right, the Backyard Ballistics guy is saying that this solution here, according to his test, that it lasted a lot longer. Like you could reuse the solution over and over and over. And you guys remember I was doing the video where I did that chain for the other hoist that I cleaned up and I put it into the Evaporest and my Evaporest wasn't working anymore. It turned all black and uh, I ended up making that uh, cement mixer tumbler where I put the abrasive media in there. I tumbled that chain and it came out looking just beautiful. But right, the Evaporest does wear out and you know this guy is saying that it wears out a lot quicker than the citric acid baking soda solution so that's something to take into account where you're stretching that 25 dollars a long long ways you know that's making the evaporest look really expensive i don't know we'll have to do some tests have to keep dunking stuff into that solution into this citric acid solution and see how long it lasts now there's also a lot of talk about Maybe this citric acid solution is eating away at the base metal more than the evaporized. I don't think that's a big deal. I think that's minimal uh, amount if that is happening. And you might even be able to cut down on the amount of uh, baking soda that you put into the solution, make it a little bit more aggressive with the citric acid, right? Seems like that's doable as well. Just a quick look here at the Evaporest water. That is pretty black and, right, you're not seeing through to the bottom of that. And then if we look over here at the citric acid solution, it doesn't look as black. It looks more yellow. If we scrape away the foam here at the top, this looks a little bit more yellow in color compared to this looking a little more black over here. Some people say they run this through a coffee filter to try to filter out rust particles. All right, what is the magic ingredient in Evaporest? Well, I was doing some research and searching around YouTube and there is a great YouTube channel called Mass Spec Everything. And this is a scientist guy and he has a mass spectrometer. It's an incredibly expensive machine, but what he does is he analyzes different things, breaks them down and finds out what is in different things, right? So he takes evaporus, breaks it down, puts it in the mass spectrometer, and what does he find? But the main ingredient in evaporus is, I got it written down here, triethanolamine phosphate. Triethanolamine phosphate is what is in this. I guess it's commonly found in cosmetics, shaving cream, and uh, it's interesting. You take that, try ethanolamine phosphate and rust, put that into Google search. I found some other studies. I found a Chinese study all about a rust remover that they were doing work on. And that is the ingredient that they're working with. And they're also in this Chinese study talking about the use of EDTA, which is another type of rust remover, a chelator. And that brings me to another guy here, uh, Elemental Maker. He's got a YouTube channel and he's mixed up a variety of different rust removal recipes. Uh, he takes 
tetrasodium EDTA and he buffers it with some citric acid and that seems to be a really good rust remover as well. Uh, another guy that looks like he's got a really cool rust remover is his uh, YouTube channel is Just A Hand and he uses 62% uh, phosphoric acid, 5% uh, gel hand sanitizer he mixes in there. And uh, the interesting thing about these things is that you can get the ingredients readily at Home Depot. They're readily available. That's the beauty of like the backyard ballistics. You can readily get these ingredients, the citric acid, the baking soda, it's all easy to come by. And I think that's important. You know, you don't gotta contact some laboratory company to find these chemicals, but you know, pretty cheap to make the backyard ballistics compared to the Evaporust, but you know, Evaporust does a great job. And maybe you have some sensitive parts that you need to strip uh, some rust off, some corrosion off. Evaporust is an amazing product, you know. You know, there's choices of what you wanna do. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And for that hoist, I am gonna finish that thing up, paint it, I'm gonna throw it in that cement mixer tumbler that I have just to clean up, you know, it's a little bit of black residue after you pull it out of these things. That cleans up in the cement mixer tumbler. Be sure to check out the video that I made on that because that is becoming an essential tool here around the shop for cleaning up parts. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, we'll see you all soon and right on. Yeah, give me one large cheese pizza to go.